Thank you, Lord, for giving us tonight. Thank you. You knew. This amazes me, Lord. Before the foundation of time, you knew we'd be sitting in this place on this night. You knew what it was that you wanted us to hear for this moment in our lives. Lord, for those who are watching or listening at another time, at a later time, it's your perfect time. It's your perfect time. And Lord, I just ask you to please anoint me one more time. Let the mantle of teacher to come and rest on me. Enable me to be accurate and clear and plain with what it is that you've put on my heart for tonight. Lord, I have to be honest with you. I love this message because it stirs something up inside of me. And I'm trusting you that it will do that for all who hear as well because it is your word and it is your anointing. And I thank you and praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. I have um, taught or preached a rendition of this message uh, around the world. <laughs> uh, throughout the United States, in India, in Romania, in the Dominican Republic, um, the message has to do with hope. Hope. And the name of the message is Hope the Holy Cord. Hope the Holy Cord. And they, that may not mean a lot to you at this moment. It does to Jackie. <laughs> it does to others who are in this room. But uh, it's going to mean something to you by the time that we make our way through this tonight. Hope the Holy Cord. Listen, I believe with all my heart, with all my heart, I believe that there is help and there's hope and there's encouragement for your hurts and your heartaches and your challenges and all of your needs. Uh, there, there is help. There is encouragement for whatever it is that's going on in our lives. Now, why do I believe this? That there's help and encouragement for our hurts and our heartaches and our challenges. Is it because of peace? And, and if you recall, I, we shared a message, stay stayed, right? We talked about perfect peace. What do we have in this world that's perfect, right? <laughs> His peace, it's perfect, and we talked about that. Is it because of peace? You know, Jesus did say to us in John 14, 27, John 14, 27, he said, peace I leave with you, my perfect peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give you, and then he went on and he said, don't let your hearts be troubled. It's a choice. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Don't let your heart be afraid. Let my perfect peace calm you in every circumstance and give you courage and strength for every challenge. Well, there's a scripture for you, right? That's John 14, 27 from the Amplified. So do I believe there's help and encouragement because of peace? Partly. Is it because of faith? We do know, I've, I've shared it already once tonight as part of a praise report. In Mark 9, 23, Jesus said, you say to me, if you can, in other words, someone saying to Jesus, well, if you can, you can do this. And Jesus' response, you know, smiling is, if I can, all things are possible for the one who believes and trusts in me. So is there help and encouragement because of faith? Partly. Is it because of comfort? And we know what our theme scripture is in here, 2 Corinthians 1, 3 and 4. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 and 4. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so we can give that comfort to others that we've received from God. And all of that, I believe. But I very strongly believe that help and encouragement that we need 
are real and available to us primarily because of hope. And it's what you can easily call the God kind of hope. The God kind of hope. And this hope is not wishful thinking. I'll tell you what, <laughs> um, it, it is not wishful thinking. So for a moment, I just want you to consider what do you need, what do you really need for God to do for you? Take it personally. What do you really need for God to do for you? And I would like for you to write that down. I would like for you to write it down. What do you need for God to do for you? Some could fill pages. I'm just looking for one key thing, right? Listen, hope is not wishful thinking. Hope is a major spiritual force that has tremendous power. The God kind of hope is a major spiritual force that has tremendous power. Now think about how hard the enemy of your soul fights against this. How many of you grew up from the earliest remembrances that you have with people saying to you, well, don't get your hopes up. Let me see your hands. Yeah. Well, don't get your hopes up, right? The enemy just pouring it into us, pouring it into us, pouring it into us. Don't get your hopes up. Listen, Ephesians 1.18, Ephesians 1.18 says, I pray that the eyes of your heart, the eyes of your heart, got another set of eyes, may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. We are created to know this hope. So every time you ever hear anybody say, don't get your hopes up, you take that and you throw it away as far away from you as you can get it, amen? In the name of Jesus, because we are called to know the hope to which he's called us. And I've said this many times, and I believe it to this moment, there is nothing sadder than a hopeless Christian. Because of all people, we should have hope. Of all people, we are called to hope. We are created to hope. There's nothing sadder than a Christian who has become hopeless. I told you I love this message because every time I prepare it and every time I teach it, it makes me more hopeful. Amen? More full of hope. In the Old Testament, there are more than 80 references to hope. In the New Testament, there are more than 80 references to hope. The Old Testament has two words in the Hebrew that are used for hope. One of them is batach, if you, you know, for those of you who can speak Hebrew, and I can't, right? You have to really hit that second syllable, batach. It means to trust. It means to make to be bold. To make to be bold. To be confident. To be secure. To be sure. Now, does that sound anything like our wimpy little... Well, I sure hope so. I mean, that's pathetic, isn't it? Really. And I will, hear, I will hear Christians say that over and over again. They will state something to me, and I will state some faith, something based on the word of God, and they'll, they'll say, well, I sure hope so. That's pathetic. <sighs> this word is to make to be bold, confident, secure, and sure. The one I love the most is the Hebrew word tigva, write it down, T-I-G-V-A-H, tigva, tigva. Listen to this definition. It is a living, 
a live expectation of a thing that we long for. A living, a live expectation. It's a living thing of a thing that we long for, but it literally means, the word literally means a cord of attachment. Isn't that awesome? Tigva, translated hope. Literally, a cord of attachment. It's an expectation that something that I'm longing for shall truly be received. Something I'm longing for, that it's, it truly will re be received. And that holy cord, it's, it's a rope, it's a cord attached from my heart to that thing. You know that thing I had you write down? What is that thing that you most need God to do? You need a holy cord of hope attached to that, attached to it. So in the Old Testament, hope is a living and a bold expectation of something good. A living and a bold expectation of something good. It's a, write this down, it's a fact and a feeling. It's a fact and a feeling. Now in the New Testament, the word is elpis, E-L-P-I-S, the Greek word. Listen to this. It means to anticipate with pleasure, to have an expectation, to have a confidence, elpis, to anticipate with pleasure, to have expectation and confidence. So listen, hope from God, the God kind of hope, hope God's way, it's a pleasurable expectation that we have with bold confidence. Can you say amen? A pleasurable expectation that we have with gold, bold confidence. Think about Jeremiah 29, 11. For many of you, it's your life verse. Jeremiah 29, 11. God says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Can you say the next words with me? Plans to give you hope and a future, right? A future expectation, future expectation. The King James says, I know the thoughts, God says, I know the thoughts I think toward you. God is thinking about me. That is awesome. He is thinking about you. This is the literal translation in the King James. God says, I know the thoughts I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. An expected end. The Amplified says to give you hope in your final outcome. Wow. Okay, perfect example. Consider a woman who has conceived, okay? It is a fact way before it's a feeling, right? A woman who has conceived, it's a fact, it's real, it has taken place, but it's a fact way before it is a feeling. And how do we describe her? She is expecting, amen? Within her is a live, expectation, a live expectation. And think about this. She has a cord of attachment. How cool is that, right? She has a cord of attachment, that umbilical cord to sustain the life. It brings sustenance and it brings nourishment. And there's a holy cord of attachment between the mother and that expectation, right? I mean, isn't that cool? It's so awesome. I don't know how much you know about an umbilical cord, and I don't know a lot. But there's one thing I know, and this is very cool. The umbilical cord has two arteries and one vein. The two arteries bring nourishment to the child. The two arteries bring nourishment to the child, and the vein removes all the waste. 
Amen. I mean, this will preach. <laughs> we need to take into us what is good, what God has for us, and we need to get rid of the waste. Amen. Yeah, go ahead. Give him praise. Amen. For a mother, everything matters. The food, the exercise, what she's drinking, the medications, even what she inhales matters for the life and the well-being of the child. That life must be sustained and it must be maintained. And it is exactly the same for the God kind of hope in us. It must be conceived. It must be conceived. That hope has to be birthed in us. That's why I had you write down your greatest need. So that before this night is over, you can conceive what is needful to bring hope to that. The God kind of hope. We must conceive it. It must be conceived. It must be sustained. And it must be maintained. Because we can lose our hope. Right? We can lose our hope. We all end up in situations where we feel like we're losing our hope. I love Hebrews 6.19. Hebrews 6.19 <laughs> that says, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, for our mind, our choice making, our emotions, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary, that, that inner place where God is, this hope that's an anchor for our soul. Uh, a lot of people think that, that an anchor um, is, <laughs> is nice if you want to stop someplace and go fishing or go swimming or look around. Listen, the anchor is the number one piece of safety equipment that a boat must have. It is more important than life preservers. Well, Pastor Connie, why would you say such a thing? Because if you lose power, if you have a motor and it quits, if you're sailing and it stops, the wind stops blowing, it is the anchor that will keep you from crashing into the rocks or from drifting out to sea and being lost. Are you with me? Hope is the anchor for our soul. It keeps us from crashing into the rocks. It keeps us from drifting off and drifting out to sea in, a, in our loss of hope state. The Amplified puts it this way. This hope, listen to this, this confident assurance we have as an anchor of the soul, it cannot slip and it cannot break down under what ever pressure bears upon it. That is so good. This hope, this confident assurance we have as an anchor of the soul, it cannot slip and it cannot break down under whatever pressure bears upon it. It is a safe and steadfast hope that enters into the veil of the heavenly temple, that most holy place in which the very presence of God dwells. Can you say amen? Amen, amen. Colossians 1.27 says this. Colossians 1.27, Christ is in you. Can you finish this with me, some of you? The hope of glory. This is an inside thing. This is where this is conceived. Just like a mother conceiving that natural child. This is, this is an inside Holy Spirit thing. Christ in you is the hope of glory. Now that holy cord of attachment, we need to protect it. It must not be harmed in any way. We need to guard it. We need to sustain it. We need to maintain it. Proverbs 13, 12 is a very powerful but sad scripture. Proverbs 13, 12 says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. And that's what happens. 
Sometimes we'll be hoping for something, believing for something. It's not happening. It's looking more and more hopeless. And that hope is deferred. And literally, our hearts are getting sick. We are feeling sick at heart, literally. I gave you that praise report before of that woman walking in the door. I mean, she, she was... She was so sick in her heart, she didn't even know if she could go on living. Hope was so deferred. A Christ follower should never feel hopeless. We should never feel hopeless, but if we do, we have to understand something is seriously wrong. Something is spiritually wrong. And we need to be willing to admit it, to admit it. Now here, I, I heard a devotional earlier this week. Um, precious woman, um, C.C. Sheets, Dutch Sheets' wife, and she was talking about, about hope. And um, she said a likely progression when we are losing hope is that we will go from discouragement to confusion. Why hasn't God done this yet? Why hasn't this happened? We'll go from discouragement to confusion, to unbelief, to disillusionment, even in God, to bitterness, and finally to cynicism. And it's a, it's a progression that, that will just go, it, it will be like dominoes falling. Listen, Hebrews 11.1 1 says this. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Wave at me if this is easy. There's no waving going on, just for the record. Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Nothing is natural about this. This has to be supernatural. This has to be a God work. This has to be that super powerful work of hope that only God can do inside of us. Whenever I'm thinking about this, I think about the years that we did Night of Healing. Years that we did Night of Healing. And when I would come to the close and, and people would come to the altar for prayer and there would be a hundred in a line and then, and then another hundred in a line, and another hundred in a line. And to my natural mind and my natural soul, everything about it looked impossible. Impossible. But I knew that Jesus was the healer. I knew what his heart was to heal people. And I had to go forward not with what I saw with my natural eye, but what I knew to be true of God and from his word. And this is how it works. So listen, if you are faltering, if you know there is an area where your hope is faltering, I want you to write these steps down. Write it down. Number one, intentionally draw near to God. Intentionally. Reading the word, reading the word out loud. Praying, praying out loud, being still, not just talking to God, but, but let him love on you. Draw near to God. Because the word says, if you will, he will absolutely draw near to you. Number two, pray over yourself. Pray over yourself. Pray, pray words of hope and words of encouragement and words of comfort. Pray over yourself and pray it out loud. Hear yourself praying. And thirdly, <laughs> on purpose, embrace biblical faith, the God kind of faith. Embrace biblical faith. Well, here it is. 
again, Hebrews 11.1 1 from King James, faith is faith, embracing this biblical faith. Faith, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, and after that, I have written in giant letters, circled, yet. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen yet. Are you with me? With me? See, faith is the substance, the substance of things hoped for. Hope is the foundation. Hope is the foundation. If you have no hope, forget about faith. You don't have anything to build it on. I mean, I, I, I will hear people who are hopeless and, and people will just say to them, oh, just have more faith. There is nothing to build that faith on. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for. Hoped for. So no hope, no faith. I am praying this night for an impartation of hope into your lives. And wherever, whoever, whenever you're listening or watching, I am praying for an impartation of hope into your life. The God move in your life. Tigva, a holy cord. It's a fact and a feeling. So here's the scripture that I referred to earlier in a praise report. 2 Corinthians 1, 20 through 22. 2 Corinthians 1, 20 through 22, which says, for no matter how many promises God has made, and there are thousands in the word of God, no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ Jesus. And then it goes on to say, and so through him, the amen is spoken by us. What's that mean? It means we find that promise and we come into agreement with it. Amen? We find it, we come into agreement, and the amen is spoken by us unto the glory of God. And what is happening when we're doing that? Our holy hope cord attaches to the yes. Right? The yes in us attaches to what we're grabbing hold of. Are you with me? Do you understand what I'm saying? Our holy hope cord is attached to the yes. Now, when I'm in foreign countries, it seems like that's like the only place I ever do this, I usually do illustrated sermons because I'm preaching and somebody is interpreting and I want to make sure that people are getting it, right? I want to make sure they're getting it. And the very first time that I ever did an illustrated sermon of this was in India. And Jackie, <laughs> who's back there, yes, she is back there, sitting in the sound booth, yes, she is on the ministry team, yes, she works in our office at the church. Jackie was holding the cord literally from her heart. I'm talking literally from her heart. And I think at that particular time, the first time I did it, Nancy, did you have the other end of that rope? Yeah, she had the other end of that rope. And here's how it worked. At that time, Jackie's heart was so horrible that she was basically one tick away from being on a heart transplant list. I'm telling you, it was horrible. It was her words. Horrible, horrible, was horrible, horrible. And here's how this worked. Nancy had one end of the rope and Nancy's name was healing. And Jackie had the other end of the rope. And here's how it began. And they were far apart. Jackie would pray a healing scripture, Lord, you are the God who heals me and pull the rope. And Nancy would come closer. 
God, it is by your wounds that we are healed. And she would pull it again. Nancy was healing, coming closer. Are you understanding what I'm saying? The holy cord of attachment to the yes. That was Exodus 15, 26 and Isaiah 53, 5. Psalm 103, verse 3, Lord, Jackie prayed, you are the God who forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases, including heart disease. Another pull coming closer. Are you with me? Are you with me? Psalm 107, verse 20, she prayed, Lord, you sent forth your word to heal me. Matthew 8, 16, Lord, with a word, you healed all the sick. Lord, I thank you for Hebrews 13, 8, that says you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? I thank you, Lord, with every prayer she prayed, every prayer she prayed, every prayer of agreement, healing coming closer and closer because of that holy cord of attachment. Lord, you are still the healer. You are my healer, and it is by your wounds that I am healed. Amen? Amen. You know what? Is it completely done? It isn't. Is she still praying this? Yes. Is healing still drawing closer and closer to her? Absolutely. Absolutely. Is she functioning, raising her son, part of ministry? Amen? Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? But it's a process. She had to conceive it. She had to maintain it and sustain it the God kind of hope. Amen? amen? Amen and amen. So listen, I don't know what you wrote down on your sheet of paper, but I want us to attach some holy cords, okay? And I'm going to go through some scriptures really quickly, really quickly. The first one is salvation. I don't know if you have received Jesus as your Savior, None of this is going to work until that happens. I mean, your scriptures, John 3, 16, God so loved the world he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. Romans 10, 9, and 10, pulling it toward me. How does this happen? I believe in my heart. I believe what I just said in my heart. And I confess it with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and a miracle happens. I'm born again. I am born again. And I love that 2 Peter 3.19 says that he is waiting patiently for you. He's already done everything, everything he needs to do. He is waiting patiently for you. So I'm not waiting till the end, right now. If there's anyone in this room and you would say to me, Pastor Connie, I've never done this. I have never accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. I have never made him Lord of my life. And I need to get this settled right now, right at this moment. Anybody in this room, you would say that to me? I just want you to raise your hand because I want us to get this settled so that we can go on and receive all that God has for us. No hands in this room. I don't know where you are, but listen to me. Jesus died for you. He shed his blood for you. He was resurrected for you. Take it personally and receive it into your life today. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. Pick up your pens. Here we go. I'm going to fly. All right. Do you feel hopeless in any of these areas? Any of these areas? If I hit you, if I hit what you wrote down, write down your scripture. Do you feel unloved? Psalm 147, 11. 147, 11. The Lord delights in those who put their hope in his unfailing love. His love never fails. Do you feel tired? <laughs> Wave at me. You feel tired? Spirit, soul, or body? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Isaiah 40, 31. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Can you say amen? amen? Do you feel sad? So many people are feeling sad in these days. Romans 12, 12. Romans 12, 12. Be joyful. How? In hope. 
Isn't that amazing? Hope is directly attached to joy. Be joyful in hope. Do you feel shame? Things you did that you wish you hadn't, things you should have done and you didn't. Psalm 25 verse 3 says, 25 verse 3, no one whose hope is in him will ever be put to shame. Can you say amen? What a glorious scripture that is. No one whose hope is in him will ever be put to shame. Are you fearful? Are you afraid in these days? Over 600 times in the word, it's, uh, we are told, do not fear. God knew this would come to try to rob our hope from us. But the very word hope means a safe expected end. A safe expected end. 1 John 4.18, John 4, there is no fear in love. No fear in love. But his perfect love drives out fear. Amen? The more I know he loves me, the more I know I can trust him, and the less I have to fear. Do you need healing? I gave you a whole bunch of those with the Jackie, right? Psalm 103.3, he forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. All is all. 1 Peter 2.24, by his wounds you have been healed. Psalm 107 verse 20, he sent his word and healed them and rescued them from their destruction. Glory to God. Are you losing hope regarding the salvation of your child? We pray it every time. Deuteronomy 30, 19, and 20. Deuteronomy 13 and 20. That says, as you choose life, you and your seed will live. Don't give up. Are you struggling financially? Well, Malachi 3, 10 and 11. Malachi 3, 10 and 11. Boy, is there a holy cord of hope for tithers. Amen? Amen. Malachi 3, 10 and 11. And then Philippians 4, 19. And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Are you bound by anything? Addicted to anything? Galatians 5.1, it is for freedom that Christ has made us free and completely liberated us. Completely. Can you say amen? Comple it's not just for a moment. It's, it's for freedom to be like breathing when we're healthy. Amen? Do you need comfort? Well, that's our theme scripture. Comfort, 2 Corinthians 1, 3, and 4, comes to comfort us in all of our troubles. All of our troubles. So, what did you write down? What did you think about as you came in here tonight? Your greatest need from God. Now, I may have covered it with the scripture. And if I did, I promise you that was only one of about 10 references in the Bible, find in the word the promise that covers your need. Find it in the word of God. So that, that, that's your holy cord of attachment. That's it. The, the, the answer is yes, in the heavenlies. It's already been done through Christ Jesus. And as we pray and believe, we are drawing it toward us. Hebrews 10, 23. Hebrews 10, 23 says this. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope that we profess. For he who has promised it, he's faithful. Amen? Unswervingly holding on. This holy cord of attachment, this living, glorious expectation. I want to read to you a bit from that devotion that I shared earlier that so touched my heart this week. Um, Dutch Sheets, in a book that he has, The Power of Hope, tells the story of a family in the Arizona desert. 
One night, a fierce desert storm struck with rain, hail, and high wind. And at daybreak, feeling sick and fearing what he might find, Sammy went to survey the loss. The hail had beaten the garden into the ground. The house was partially unroofed. The hen house had blown away and dead chickens were scattered about. Destruction and devastation were everywhere. While standing dazed, evaluating the mess and wondering about the future, Sammy heard a stirring in the lumber fire pile that was the remains of the hen house and a rooster started climbing up and continued until he had mounted the highest board in the pile. That old rooster was dripping wet, and most of his feathers were blown away. But as the sun came over the eastern horizon, he flapped his bony wings and proudly crowed. When the morning sun appeared on the horizon, that beat up featherless rooster amidst all the chaos and all the devastation, I would say all that looked hopeless, he still crowed, announcing the beginning of a new day. Why? Because it was his nature to do so. Winds of adversity may be blowing through our lives, and we feel that our part of the world is falling apart. But if we will look closely, we'll see the light of God's faithfulness shining through the debris. And we can rise above the disillusionment because it is our nature to overcome. Amen. Can you say amen? That's what God says about us in Romans 8. Romans 8 from the Message Bible, verses 35 through 39, it is laced with a power of hope, the supernatural power of hope. Do you think anyone is going to be able to drive a wedge between us and Christ's love for us? There's no way. Not trouble, not hard times, not hatred, not anger, not homelessness, not bullying threats, not backstabbing, not even the worst sins listed in Scripture. None of this phases us because Jesus loves us. I'm absolutely convinced that nothing, nothing living or dead, angelic or demonic, today or tomorrow, high or low, thinkable or unthinkable, absolutely nothing can get between us and God's love Amen. because of the way that Jesus, our master, has embraced us. Amen? Amen? Amen. Romans 8, 35 to 39. So I say to you, you are going to climb up out of the debris. You're going to flap your bony wings <laughs> <laughs> and announce to the world that you've entered a new day. Why? Because deep within, your DNA can do this. You are an overcomer. It's time to trust again. It's time to hope again. And I'm going to pray a prayer, and I'm just going to ask you to bow your heads, and still your hearts and your spirits, and come into agreement with me as I pray. Father, we thank you that you know our hearts, even when we can't see clearly. Your love for us never changes. Even when we seem to lose hope and we don't know what to say to you, we know that you're faithful. You are Jehovah Shalom, our peace. You are Jehovah Rapha, the one who heals our heart. You are El Shaddai, the one who has power over all, Elohim, the strong and mighty one, but full of compassion. We choose to believe your truths that you watch over us. You are good, faithful, merciful, 
you cannot lie. You're my strong tower, my refuge, and my strength. Lord, I ask you for your peace and your strength. I trust that you hold my times and my seasons in your hands. Today, I choose to run into your loving arms and allow your wraparound presence to comfort me and to sustain me. Lord, we will not waver in our faith, but we will choose to stand firm, believing your truths. We will hold on to your promises for us personally. We will attach that holy cord of hope to that which is needful in our lives. And we will hold on to your promises for America. We ask you to visit us with your Holy Spirit. Sweep across our hearts, sweep across our land. Shine the light of your truth and drive out all darkness. We choose to be your instruments of love and compassion while carrying the torches of truth and justice. Breathe your hope across our hearts and across our land today in Jesus' name. Can you say amen, amen, and amen, and amen, amen. Okay, here's your assignment. Every single one of you, I think, wrote something down. Okay, if you know what your holy cord of attachment needs to be now for that, would you wave at me? Would you wave at me? Okay, if you don't, if you have something written on your paper and you don't, then I need for you to connect with one of the ministry team members and they'll be challenged. And if they don't know what it is in the word, then they'll go to Linda and Linda will tell them. <laughs> or to me or to Nancy, but we will find it in the word because I promise you what you need is covered in the word of God. And what you have to do is get your holy cord of attachment, that life expectation, and let it be conceived in your heart tonight, conceived whenever it is that you're listening. Let that conception come, and then do what you know it is that you need to do to sustain it and maintain it until you see it with your natural eyes. Faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen, what's the word? Yeah. Yet, amen. in Jesus' name. Can you say amen, and amen, and amen. Lord, we just thank you for your word. It's so mighty, it's so powerful. And Lord, I do pray for an absolute impartation of hope into lives tonight. Those who knew they were faltering, they knew they were losing it. They knew that their, their God kind of hope had just kind of turned into a wimpy, wishful thinking. God, let that be changed at this very moment. I ask you, Lord, for those in this room that you will take them home safely with huge angels on guard round about them to their places of rest and that they will <laughs> rise in the morning and they might feel like that rooster. <laughs> flapping those bony wings but lord i thank you it's in our dna and we will rise above the debris and we will praise you we will praise you we will have hope because we are created that's our dna to overcome and we give you glory and honor and praise for it in jesus name and all god's people said amen and amen